Now what we're going to do is we're going to change the uh, IP addresses of the Solera simulator. So open up the console um, and you'll notice that you're prompted with a login. This is the control station in the Solera architecture. Now there's two logins. There's root NAS admin and those are really used only for initial IP address config um, and then afterwards for all purposes you should use NAS admin, NAS admin and in certain rare cases that I'll show you later occasionally SU yourself to get the uh, uh, requisite authority to continue the task. Okay, so now let's log in and continue the rest of the action. For people who are, uh, you know, have experience configuring um, Linux, this is going to be very straightforward. Uh, now, just to be clear, the Solera doesn't run on Linux. It's kind of like VMware. The management console is based on Linux, but the actual Solera itself runs its own proprietary operating system called Dart. So what we're going to do now is we're going to configure the IP address addresses of the control station in the architecture. First of all, if I just do an IF config, that's kind of like an IP config for Windows folks, you can see that there's Dart ETH0 and Dart ETH1. Those are just internal uh, uh, interfaces. They don't actually connect to the outside world. They connect to the service that is pretending to be a data mover running Dart. ETH0 is connected to the first VNIC and it, it's going to map to one of the two Solera Dart interfaces. If I continue down, you'll see ETH1, which by default actually doesn't map to anything. In this particular example, I'm going to change it so that it maps to, uh, uh, you know, to uh, the next CGE1 port, which is again the data mover uh, Ethernet port. And ETH2 is, is the management interface for the control station and very important. So that's basically the IP address where once you're complete, you're going to manage everything from that interface. And then you can see a loopback interface. Now, I had already configured the IP addresses, but let me show you how you would do it if you hadn't already configured it. Netconfig-D for device, and then you specify the interface. So in this case, let's start with ETH0. And it brings up uh, <laughs> sudo GUI, where you can basically just type in the IP address, netmask, default gateway and uh, primary name server that you're going to use. In my example, um, I used 192.168.99 um, and you'll see how I configure that to a, a, a data mover IP address later. Then let's just repeat the same process for ETH1 and for ETH2. Again, for those of you that aren't familiar with this, basically just type it in, hit tab to go between the lines and then enter when you're on the OK. So in this example, notice I'm doing a different subnet because this is going to be attached to the VNIC that's connected to my uh, iSCSI connected vSwitch. I'll use the same you know, gateway IP address because this host should really only have one default gateway. And then we're going to continue and do the last interface. And for ETH2, again, is the interface that you're later on going to use for all the Solera management. You can basically manage the whole thing via a GUI. This is only an initial config. And by the way, with a real Solera, this arrives with a simple, easy wizard that uh, is a GUI-driven interface. This is something that you only need to do with a Solera simulator, not obviously with a real Solera. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring down each interface with the IF down command. So that brings down Ethernet 0. And then I'm just going to hit tab, which brings up the same line, ETH1, and so on and so forth. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up um, ETH0, ETH1, and ETH2. You could, of course, just type in reboot-n for now, and that would reboot the Solera sim, and it would come up with the new interface. And the new uh, IP addressing that we've just assigned. Again, for Windows-oriented folks, this is the equivalent of going into the uh, network neighborhood, right-click, properties, configuring the LAN interfaces with the specific IP addresses that you would do uh, um, you know, via the GUI. So let's just do a quick check here now that this is all done, just to make sure that everything was done. So I'll do a quick IF config. Take a look at all the interfaces. You can see that the IP addresses are assigned. Dot one dot ninety nine. Dot you know ten dot one ten dot zero dot one dot ninety nine and then one ninety two one sixty eight dot one dot ninety eight is the management interface. 
a good thing to do here, by the way, is to just test pinging things because you know it's a good thing to check at every point that the uh, configuration is correct. If you can ping it, it means that the IP addresses have taken place, they're on the correct V switches because they can see hosts that are outside uh, uh, in the physical realm or other VMs hanging off the same V switch. Now, one thing that's just a neat thing to point out is you'll notice again Dart ETH0 and Dart ETH1. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to ping 128.221.252.2 and the question is what is that? Well that's a service running in the control station pretending to be a data mover in the Solera simulator. And what that means is that basically the control station can quote unquote see or reach the, uh, uh, the data mover which is going to be important later on. Let's log out and move to the next step.